Today we're looking at 10 of the most underrated exercises people aren't doing in the gym. I chose this list based on three different criteria. First, exercises people aren't doing enough of in general at all. Secondly, exercises people might have done before but have either stopped doing or aren't given the same priority as other exercises. And finally, adjustments to some commonly performed exercises that truly make it an exercise that I believe stands on its own as something worth trying. Now this is my list and it's not comprehensive and I'm sure there'll be points that you agree and disagree with and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Number one is the underhand grip bench press. This one ticks boxes number one and three. Just about everybody's done a bench press, but very few have tried it with an underhand grip. Apart from feeling a little bit strange at first through the hands and the wrists, the real reason why we do this is to create a narrower elbow path. Anatomically, this might be a better position for your chest muscles to have better leverage over your arm. In plain English, what this means is your chest muscles can get a better stretch and can work more effectively. This might be why there is some data out there showing that you can get better upper chest activation from this, even when compared to a traditional incline barbell bench press. It does look a little weird, but this is surprisingly comfortable after just a few tries. Next is the high cable row. This is one that pretty much disappeared somewhere in the late 80s or early 90s and very quickly became a very rare piece of equipment. I don't think many people realize just how well it lines up your back muscles to work compared to a traditional cable row, and they gravitated more towards that traditional horizontal row you see in most gyms. Most people think of maybe vertical or horizontal pulling, but I believe diagonal pulls are extremely underrated. Although it is cool to see it gaining a little bit of popularity nowadays. If you don't have this set up, you can do it kneeling or seated in an adjustable cable station. Number three is the Copenhagen plank. This one is usually seen as a rehab exercise or maybe an activation drill since it was really popularized by Danish groin injury researchers, in particular Christian Thorberg. However, in my opinion, adductors or the inner thigh muscles in general may be some of the most undertrained muscles overall, which is quite surprising given just how big and strong and powerful these muscles are, particularly out of the bottom of a squat or a deadlift motion, and how so many athletic positions put us into positions where the adductors need Need to have a good amount of strength and power. The Copenhagen plank is a fantastic start point for training them and it can be very quickly progressed into harder variations and go from a static exercise into a more dynamic one that really challenges your entire lower body, your core and even your upper body to work together as one cohesive unit. Number four is the leg press. This one is gonna be a little weird to add to the list because I'm sure many of you do leg presses and there aren't many fancy variations I'm gonna be talking about today. But while most people are probably doing leg presses, I think they get pushed aside a lot over free weight exercises like barbell squats. Nobody cares what you leg press. It's all about your squat numbers. So first up, if you are bragging about your leg press numbers, we definitely need to have that conversation that nobody cares. But also, while nobody cares about leg press numbers, leg presses are one of the most valuable ways to gain a lot of lower body strength and to push your legs to completely different limits than you can probably ever achieve with squats. And they remove your lower back or technique from being the limiting factor in the equation, which can be extremely valuable. Now I know people are gonna be all up in the comments saying, oh, but your stabilizer muscles don't get trained. Well, first of all, stabilizer muscles don't really exist as a separate thing. The muscles that stabilize your hips and knees are your glutes, quads, adductors, hamstrings, and all the tiny rotator muscles around the hip joint, all of which get trained on free weight squats and on machine leg presses. Stability is an action that we could train for by adding in more instability, but if that was the pure goal, then a free weight squat is horrible compared to doing it on a Swiss ball or using a pistol squat or even balancing on one leg just holding some weights. If you want to feel your stabilizer muscles, grab a pair of heavy dumbbells and try to stand on one leg for more than 20 seconds. I guarantee you'll feel things you've never felt before. Now, does that mean that it's better than squats or leg presses? No, it doesn't. It just means you're challenging your stability more. And that's not necessarily a good or a bad thing. For most people, stability as an action will be trained when doing everyday life. And if you're following a well-rounded program that includes things like maybe running or plyometrics or other athletic based drills. If you wanna get stronger legs and build some muscle, then the leg press and squats are both valuable tools. All right, let's go to exercise number five, the rope pull down. A lot of people are doing pull downs on rows, but not as many people are doing them with a rope. And I believe it's an absolute game changer. First, it allows you to customize your grip and find more comfortable positions than a fixed bar may provide. And secondly, it allows you to create this outwards force as you pull down. So it's not just about pulling in or down, it's pulling apart. The benefit to this is it can help coordinate your arm and upper back muscles to work together, and it really lights everything up back there. Even though there's nothing pulling your hands in together, it's a great subconscious cueing technique to be using. I love it on pull downs with a slight lean back to really target the rear delts, and on a horizontal row to really let me stretch forwards and open everything up through my back. Number six is a split squat. 
People are absolutely doing these in all their variations, but I think they're still often seen as an accessory movement and not as the main meat and potatoes to a workout. Just like before, it's all about what you can squat, bro, not about split squats. But there are unique benefits you're going to get from any single leg exercise like split squats that you can't get from traditional two-legged squat movements, primarily with how it challenges your rotation at the hip. This is big as this is a huge limiter to many people's range of motion and mobility, and it can also help you access more strength and untrained ranges of motion in areas like the adductors and the glutes. I absolutely believe that many people would benefit from experimenting with doing split squats as a primary exercise, just like a barbell squat, and experiment with things like stability assistance if you need it, so you can really go ham and push hard and heavy on split squats. Number seven is the last lower body exercise on this list, and it's the hyperextension. Again, people are probably doing this movement, but it's definitely more of an afterthought for most people. It's more of a lower back exercise or something that gets skipped because at the end of a workout. But if you really think about this for a second, the hyperextension literally is just a stiff leg deadlift that's been rotated forwards 45 degrees or so. What this means is it can be categorized with the same priority that you might give a deadlift or deadlift variation and you can really hammer your entire posterior chain with this exercise. The challenge is a lot of people's gyms won't have access to one that gives you enough height to really load up a ton, but you can experiment with either upper back loading or try elevating your hyperextension up on blocks to create extra height that you need for a barbell or a dumbbell if your gym allows for it. Underrated exercise number eight is the prone Y raise. Like the high cable row, Y raises are starting to get a little more popularity over the last couple of years, which is really cool to see. But one extra challenge here is to not just do them on an incline or standing upright, but laying completely flat or as close to flat as possible. This will really challenge the upper back and shoulder muscles in their fully shortened position, which is notoriously very weak and undertrained. Don't be surprised if you're only using very tiny weights here. I like to do these with small plates with a five second hold on each rep, and then I might even do a quick mechanical advantage drop set and go up on an incline to finish everything off after. Exercise number nine is the humble push-up. Most of us would have done a push-up at least once in our lives, and many people would have felt like they have graduated beyond them and switched them out for other exercises like bench presses. The unique benefit to a push-up is you get more freedom at the shoulder blades to work the muscle called the serratus anterior, which is super important for shoulder function and mobility. And secondarily, when we're placing our wrists into such extreme positions of extension, this will help to stretch out the flexor muscles in your forearms under load. You can load this up using a weight belt or bands and reintroduce a whole new world of challenge that many people have completely overlooked. All right, final exercise. But before we get there, do you think I'm missing anything? Let me know in the comment section below and maybe we'll do a follow-up video with even more underrated exercises. Final one is the dead hang. This is a super simple and accessible way to introduce some loaded stretching for the shoulders and back muscles into your workouts. I normally do sets of around 10 to 60 seconds depending on what I'm currently working on. You can work with different amounts of assistance or progression and even add weight. You can use it for grip strength or flexibility training with the use of straps. And these are simply one of my absolute favorite ways to both start and finish your workout to get me feeling nice and loose. All right, that's it for today, guys. If you're after a program that helps to fill in the gaps of some of these underrated exercises and muscle regions, check out my programs on Gambiru. My recommended start points are prep or women's foundations for beginners, power build 2.0 or push pull legs 2.0 for intermediates, and split and the full body programs for more advanced trainees. If you use the code underrated, you'll receive 10% off access to all the programs. And if you don't want a program but want to watch another video, check out one over here as well.